Hi, I'm Big Joe Lewis and welcome to the Blues Kitchen. <laughs> Our very dear friend, Big Joe Lewis, returns to the Blues Kitchen TV. Earlier in the year, Big Joe stopped by to discuss our shared love of R.L. Burnside. Now, back with his ace band, the guys record four killer tunes for us, one of which is a spellbinding cover of Charlie Booker's No Riding. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for regular episodes of the Blues Kitchen Presents. Big Joe Lewis, welcome hey, back. Nice to have you back again. It's very nice to be back with the Blues Kitchen family. <laughs> so, we've been in this room, or you've been in this room, this very room, behind this kit with these guitars for the last kind of four or five hours, cutting four tunes. Yes. In session today. So we're doing this a bit backwards. Normally we do the interview first. You tell us about the cover you're going to perform. We've actually had the privilege... You've done it the other way around. <laughs> ...hanging out with you all day. Yeah. Um, and it's the first time you've been in the studio for a few years, isn't it? Yep. You said I got quite shy, but yeah. it wasn't too much of a daunting experience coming hanging out with us the other day. If any, but I've turned down a few opportunities to record over the last number of years, <laughs> and because you know, Blues Kitchen, I love, and I love the Blues Kitchen family, and I trust you, so that's why I'm here. Thank you very much yeah. for putting faith in us. It's the truth. <laughs> well, the, the tracks today definitely speak for themselves, but. I think maybe the first tune of yours I heard recorded, perhaps, I think I probably heard after I'd first spoken to you and got you to come and play in the clubs many years ago, was Go Go Train. Oh, yeah. And I love that performance on that record. And is that maybe one of the last things that you recorded? That was the last thing I recorded. That was back in 2007. And that came out brilliant as of yeah. today's session. So, come well, on, we need more of you. Come well, and hang in the you studio. See, actually, that was... Uh, that was a little bit of a fluke because I went over to Helsinki to record with the house band at Timian Records, who are fantastic. And okay. we did some things and it was kind of sounding good. Mm. And it was about three o'clock in the morning and we were about to leave and they say, hey, we've got this backing track. Do you think you could come up with some words for it? And I said, I'll try. And that's Go Go Train. We did it in about an hour. Really? Um, so I didn't even... Uh, record that with the live band. It was just me on a backing tra track. Is that what that was? Yeah. But so the... I've seen you play that live yep. with a band mm -hmm. and also just by yourself solo that tune. Um, but is that something you, you'd only heard the backing track that night? Yeah. Like a hip hop artist going and putting a rap down straight away. People often say that about <laughs> me. <laughs> um, well, maybe you could tell us a bit about the cover you did say. No More Riding. No Riding. No yes. Riding. Yeah. This is a, a song that was uh, written and recorded by a fellow called Charlie Booker, who was a, a singer and guitar player from Greenville, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And when I first started getting into blues records, I bought this compilation that had all his four sides that he'd recorded for this company, the two, two singles he'd had issued in the early 50s. And King David and I, my longtime guitar playing friend and I, we would sit and listen to this thing over and over because it just, he had such an unusual style and he just didn't play in that standard mm -hmm. 12 bar Chicago style. It was really different and we loved it and we would try to play it and, and so basically the end of it story is that I've been playing it on and off for, since I was 20 years old or something and it really meant something to me and I remember that in the late 80s I read a article in one of the blues magazines that's saying Charlie Booker was, was quite ill. Mm -hmm. He'd moved to he'd moved from Greenville, Mississippi to a place called South Bend, Indiana. And they gave an address for him and they said, you know, he's not doing too well. Any cards or uh, you know, letters would be appreciated. That's the way they used to do it. So that was printed, they printed his address yeah, in the magazine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. That used to happen a lot of times. You know, people would put out requests for funds for a funeral. Same kind of thing that you see on Facebook. So I wrote this card and letter saying, you know, get well soon kind of thing. Mm. And between the letter getting there and, and the reply, he'd passed. And I got this really nice letter from his uh, girlfriend and she sent me a copy of his funeral program because he'd passed on there, this beautiful picture of him. And uh, a very nice note from her saying it was nice to know that his music was listened to in around the world and other, other places. 
uh, like Mars, and uh, <laughs> and so I had this this funeral program, and it really meant a lot to me. And later on in years, I would play with people from around Greenville uh, and Leland, which is where he was from. So mm -hmm. that's uh, the sort of western edge of the Delta. And they told this story, more than one of them. They said, you know that line in that song, Greenville smoking and Leland's burning down? Just after that record came out, there was a big fire in Greenville. And uh, it was something like a furniture warehouse or a big okay. home burned down. And people were convinced that Charlie Booker, kind of, you know, he'd had this premonition about this fire. Greenville smoking and Leland's burning down. And, you know, Booba Barnes told me that okay. story. And he was from Greenville too. Spiritual stuff, whether he'd yeah, well, seen it, dreamt it, yeah. had a vision, something along those lines. But I like the song, and I, will, I have ever since I was a boy. So I have a couple of questions for you on the tune. When you first picked up that compilation, was it a random find? Was it something you'd gone looking for, or was it the artist you just stumbled across in a record store on this compilation? It was, you know when you know you like something, and you keep dipping your finger into little things and just trying and saying, well, I like that looks like the kind of thing I'd like. And of course, in those days, you couldn't go on YouTube and you couldn't Spotify stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was an investment. And, you know, I can remember spending many hours looking at records in record shops thinking, yeah, I don't know, maybe. And they wouldn't play it for you, maybe because it was sealed or they just were like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you really had to kind of think, yeah, I'm going to buy this. And so this was in a series of uh, LPs that uh, were from Kent Modern Records. Mm -hmm. There was one Mississippi Blues, Blues from the Deep South, Texas. Um, Probably for anyone that might be I don't know, watching this and doesn't know an awful amount of the blues, that'd be really good compilations to they find are, their way in. They are. Um, one thing I would say is that, of course, um, they have now been reissued on CD, expanded, Ace Records have done them, they're called Modern Down Home Blues. Mm -hmm. um, and they're fantastic. You know, the LPs are, are great, but the pressings weren't, really good, they were a bit thin, the vinyl. A little flimsy. Yeah, and so absolutely the Ace CDs, Modern Down Home Blues Sessions, there are about four of them, I think. They're just great, and all the Charlie Booker and Ike Turner mm -hmm. and Wolf is on some. And, and you said you've been doing the tune in your sets on and off for maybe, what, 20 years? Yeah, a long like time, that. longer than that. Um, so when you've been covering a song for that amount of time, ownership's maybe the the wrong word, but obviously you put your own spin on it, your own take, but your own interpretation of the arrangement. But is there a kind of sense of belonging where it's kind of, you almost make it your own to some degree? Yeah, I mean, it's a Charlie Booker song. I mean, full stop, that's yeah. that's the way it is. And But you do, you try and do it your own little way. Charlie uh, Booker did two verses on that song. Mm -hmm. So I'd try and put a little something in which would maybe fit with the song. But you try and make it something that is, sounds like, it fits in with the set. Unlike, you know, you see a lot of people and they'll play a song in one style and they'll play a song in another style. They'll be completely different. So it's like you're hearing two different bands. Yeah. And I never wanted to, to do that. The idea is to try and get yourself, get a sound for yourself and then be a little recognisable. On that note, I think maybe it's time to introduce your performance, if that's all right. This is Big Joe Lewis with Lewis Fielding on lead guitar and Peter Greatorex on the drums and we're playing No Riding. Right. 
Subscribe to The Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today. Well, this might sound kind of funny But please don't listen to this song I know this might 